Hello there. My name is Thomas. I'm representing investmentexcel.com in today's session where we give you a brief introduction to linear regressions more flexible counterpart than nonlinear regression. I will implement the model on a time series of stock returns as a simple function of time. And as we normally assume, there is somehow an exponential relationship between time and a stock return due to earnings growth being linked in some uh, in some scale to underlying growth in economic fundamentals like GDP. We will use the ordinary squares estimation technique where we ultimately minimize the sum of squared residuals between the actual observed price of the stock and the model predicted price squared. All right, this topic is slightly advanced, so please refer to other sessions I have made on regression and OLS estimation. Let's take a look at a very simple data time series, 25 observations. And just to, to bring in some reality, I assume that these are yes. And then we have the stock price. And perhaps you can see some kind of, at least not linearity. So a model that is more flexible in, in the functionality than the linear relationship as we have in simple regression and simple multiple regression is warranted. Here we have time and time of course just reflects the observation structure of years and over here just to start with a simple graphical description of the stock price evolution we clearly see a exponential tendency and the idea now is to identify the trend the exponential trend and this can be done by the non-linear regression technique so we build a functional relationship that takes into account the supposed exponential relationship in the actual time series and then we fit and the model I use is this one <coughs> so I assume a true model of the stock price governed by this exponential relationship with a constant times the exponential function raised in beta 1 times xt and xt is simply the time at time t so if t is equal to 8 it's 8 and here is the noise for now it's just a normally distributed variable but we will not in this presentation dig too much into the statistical inference of the model but primarily look at the fitting um, capability in the OLS technique so as always when we try to fit we start by building the functionality that we have assumed and in this case it looks like this so a beta 0 times 
the exponential function where you have beta 1 <coughs> this parameter in in the exponential function times multiplied by the time and if you if you're not that accustomed to so uh, regression building and regression modeling in general then please note that the error term has cancelled out because what we estimate is not the actual price it's the expected price as long as we are operating with a sample as we as we assume this is taken from a real uh, a true world a population then then we have to estimate the expected value because there is statistical uncertainty and this I do all the way and I just put in some other values because those values were the correct values and here is the OLS technique we for each observation we take the difference between the stock price and the model stock price and we remember to square it to avoid any any uh, netting out of negative and positive numbers which would essentially leave us with a lower uh, error term or a better model if you like and I do that all the way down and then I sum them so here is what we call the uh, residual sum of squares RSS and this is the number that we now have to minimize and we minimize them we minimize the expression by changing the estimates in the model so the idea now is to use an algorithm which is the solver algorithm in Excel that that gradually changes these values until it finds the lowest possible value the lowest possible value is the value associated with the best model as the distance between the stock price and the model's predicted price is the lowest on average okay as I said we use the solver and the solver you will find in the data category unless you haven't um, downloaded it in the add-in function in file just to show you we have an add-in and here's a solver and this solver is not in the active application add-in um, as default so you have to you have to activate it also if you like to have all the nice regression tools and so on you have to activate the analysis tool pack and also the VBA analysis tool pack okay I'll just cancel it because obviously I have it up here set the objective function this is the function that Excel would like to do something with as you decide and you can either max minimize or uh, interest specific value we would like to minimize and we'd like to minimize it with respect to these two variables beta 1 and beta 0 and we have no constraints so I found a solution so now the model is estimated and is represented by the blue so now this model it's nice and it looks good and it's a trend but the 
But remember what the purpose is. The purpose is to use the model to extrapolate in the future a value for the stock price. We just we don't do this just because it looks good. We want to use it to extrapolate. So, assuming that all statistical properties are okay, as I said, we'll not go into it here. We can take the model and put in the time value somewhere in the future, and we will have an idea of what the price is. So, for instance, I would like to know what the price is in in year 30. In year 30. In this case, I will take the model times this value, which is or which can be interpreted as a annual percentage. So the stock increases by 16% a year times 13. So we see that there is a dramatic increase here and in five years forward. And that's because of the exponentiality. Let's just type in 25. And see if we hit 29 or at least approximately that we show it's 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 of course correct so this is the way to do it and of course you could just go one year ahead but just remember that this is taken from year zero, you could make your own starting point by using, say this is now, at the end of year 25. We start by this, and then we just move, up, move forward with 16% a year. Non-linear linear regression is used everywhere. Uh, in, in business and in, in academics because it has the flexibility to fit all sorts of graphical representations. So it's, it's very efficient and in Excel it's quite easy to, to, to estimate any functional relationship. It could be a square root model, it could be a polynomial model, it, it could be cosine or sinus, it could be every model. With the OLS technique, you can do it in exactly the same way as this. The only thing every, uh, one should be aware of is the statistical interpolation. But in terms of in terms of just being able to fit, the idea is exactly the same. All right. Thank you very much.